In this video, we build a cannon to launch eggs at a science fair. We've all heard of the classic egg drop, where we stuff an egg in a container to see if it'll survive a fall. Well, someone at a local school thought, instead of just dropping the container, we should launch it out of a cannon. And I like that idea. All we need is to build it. In order for this to be safe indoors, we can't power it with flames or high pressure gases. Instead, I'm trying a spring-loaded plunger that can be actuated from the side. Also, the tip of the barrel needs to be low enough for kids to load it themselves, but not so low that they're able to see inside. Now, the reason engineering school goes so deep into math is because it can be very helpful for building something like this. And if you watch my other videos, that's normally the first thing I do. But this time, I'm taking a more iterative approach, building a quick prototype to test my assumptions, see what works, and go from there. I'm also starting with basic hand tools and materials that are easy to find at a hardware store in case this works well and someone else wants to try it. The plan is this is the spring-loaded plunger that'll be drawn back and be launching the eggs out of that pipe. And we're going to use some kind of a, a spring here to help launch it. Now, I don't think these springs are strong enough, but we're just going to try it and see. We can bump them up later. Now, many engineers would start by calculating what springs are needed, then design the cannon around that. But with so many unknowns, sometimes it's faster just to build a prototype, observe the biggest issues, then focus on solving those problems. For a deeper dive on this concept, look for a TED Talk called the Marshmallow Challenge. All right, test fire one, I'm just throwing a hunk of metal in there. We're just gonna see. I, I have no idea, is this thing gonna go far or not? We're aiming towards a garbage can. Let's see if we can make it in there. <laughs> fire two. Woo! <laughs> Clearly that wasn't what we were hoping for. We were hoping the object would get launched much, much further than that, but we kind of knew that might happen. So in anticipation, when I headed to the hardware store last time, I picked up some much stiffer springs. So we're gonna swap those in and try them out. But while it makes sense that stiffer springs would launch things farther, it's actually not that simple. Graphing the force on a spring as it stretches makes a straight line or linear relationship. Dividing the force by the distance gives a value called the spring constant. But what if we try a stiffer spring that takes double the force over the same distance? Its spring constant would be double that of the first. Now imagine a third spring so stiff it has the same force in only half the distance. Dividing the force by the distance again gives a spring constant four times that of the first spring but it wouldn't likely launch our eggs any farther. That's because stored energy in a spring is found by taking the area under each of these lines. So though the last spring is four times stiffer and holding twice as much force as the first, the stored energy is the same. <laughs> oh man, I hope this thing doesn't destroy itself. I'm getting a little bit scared of this now. There's enough forces, it might actually hurt me. Let's see what happens anyway. Probably should take this outside. But what fun would that be? Oh yeah! <laughs> it landed in the garbage can. Okay, here goes. Okay, so that worked way better, but it's still not launching like I would want it to. I just happened to have these giant springs that were just hanging on the shelf or something else. I'm gonna hook these suckers up. This is gonna get scary. Let's see what happens. Oh, good grief. <laughs> okay, the reason that thing failed was because I wasn't gluing anything together because I'm rapidly trying things and taking them back apart. For instance, I only used one of the two bigger springs that I've got because it just seemed like it was too much, but now I think we're just going to go for it, put it all together with both springs and see what happens. But though the PVC pipe is supposed to be glued together, I still want to make changes quickly, so I'm bolting it together instead. But you might guess the results of that decision. Oh boy, <laughs> this is scary. Oh! <laughs> 
so it looks like we have no choice but to get out the glue and commit to a design. It's also time to bring in my son and the high-speed camera to help figure out what's really going on with this thing. Oh, and remember when I said we should probably test this thing outside? Whoops. Okay, it looks like this thing is probably going to work. So now it's time to build a really strong structure that can keep this thing angled and supported while a couple hundred kids are playing with it during the science fair. Now I don't have a CNC plasma table, but I do have an old mill I converted to CNC that I can use to fake a bunch of things I can't get afford. And while I could cut this out by hand, the end product is so much better when a computer does it that it's worth setting this whole thing up. Okay, now we have to answer the question, how are these elementary school kids going to put 75 pounds of force on these springs and let it go? Well, my plan is to make a giant wooden cam that will cock that spring and release it with every revolution. A cam is a device generally used to transmit rotary motion into linear motion. To get the shape right, we're starting with a sheet of cardboard that's easier to modify than a piece of wood. The thought is to allow kids to gradually store energy in the springs that can release all at once to launch the eggs. Now that we've confirmed the fit on the cannon, we can transfer it to a piece of plywood and cut it out by hand with a jigsaw. And now you see why it made sense to machine and weld a threaded stud for that bearing and CNC plasma cut the plate. Otherwise, this giant cam might wobble or flex under the tremendous force of the springs. Once we get it cinched down, it's time to try it and see if all that effort was for naught. Whoa! Jeez. Okay, this didn't break. <clears throat> that did. All right, we gotta take it apart and see what happened. Okay, it failed in exactly the same spot. The piece that flies up and attaches to the main plunger just failed all over again, just in a slightly different way even though I had some surgical tubing as a way to slow it down to ease that impact at the end. So I need to come up with a completely different way of doing this because this just is not working. I need it to go for a couple hundred firings at the science fair and this just isn't going to cut it. I know I said at the beginning I was going to try to build this with basic hand tools, but I'm running out of time and patience, so I'm starting over with aircraft grade aluminum. It's super light, really strong, and is the material I would have chosen from the start to give us the best chance of success. It also allows us to add machine features and threaded fasteners. That enables the use of a bearing inside the follower on the cam, minimizing friction. But I'm not getting rid of all the wooden parts. In my mind, it still makes sense to have a wooden base to ride on the inside of the pipe without cutting it to shreds. And since my previous attempts to cushion the plunger with surgical tubing were unsuccessful, I'm building a set of secondary springs to catch and decelerate the plunger rather than letting it slam to a stop. They're difficult to build, but fortunately after making the first one, I was able to use our replicator to quickly get an exact copy. And here it is, all together, the new aluminum plunger complete with dual spring-loaded stops. For installation, I'm using the stops as a jig to drill and tap mounting holes. After opening up a clearance hole and slots, I got my son to help me bolt them in place. That's a lot of fasteners, but I want to make sure that after all this work, they don't simply destroy the walls of the cannon. 
After risking a couple of test fires inside, we decided to relocate out front so my son wouldn't risk getting hit by another tennis ball bouncing off the ceiling. The high-speed camera makes it easy to see the plunger slowing down, bouncing back and forth, dissipating energy over time. And though it's not exactly launching high enough to paint a gymnasium ceiling with eggs, that's probably best if we ever want to get invited back to the school. But wait, this doesn't exactly look safe for kids. If a finger gets caught Ready? by the plunger, it's going to mean a trip to the emergency room. Three, two, one. Don't worry, I've literally got it covered. If we drive the cam with a giant wheel, then a whole team of kids could lever on it at once without injury. I just need a giant sheet of plywood and a way to cut a circle out of it. So after clearing out some spokes, I'm mounting my sawzall to a board, pivoting around the center point and working my way around the circumference until it's done. Then after adding some threaded bosses to our favorite plate, it's ready to mount to the cannon. And though these parts are way too big to fit in a typical laser engraver, I found removing my plasma cutter and installing a UV laser module works great for stenciling custom graphics. Fortunately, my wife is willing to lend her artistic skills, adding some color to make them really stand out. After a little paint here and there, this thing's ready to rock a science fair. My kid's school has an annual science fair that's been in place for over 30 years. Of course, the focus is on student projects, but parents also bring demos and activities all students can participate in. That's what this egg cannon is for, a way for kids to do the classic egg drop safely without climbing a ladder or throwing stuff off a balcony. We're providing them with everything from toilet paper to straws with the freedom to construct anything they can fit down the barrel. Some kids tried to see how small a package would do the job, while others just went for the biggest pillow that would fit. And I have to say, the cannon performed pretty well for its first time out, with no fingers pinched or faces hit by flying eggs. It's alive! Yay! Though I will admit, by the end of the night, the wooden base of the plunger had seen better days. So I'll probably need to do an upgrade before next year. Projects like this are a ton of work, but seeing the kids having fun while doing experiments makes it all worth it. Now, if you like seeing an engineer attempt crazy projects like this one, be sure to like, subscribe, and that way I'll see you in the next video.